So if you are a creator or an influencer that is working with a brand, maybe it's your first time and you signed the contract and now you're like, now what? What happens next? What do I do next? This video is going to be for you. I'm gonna be sharing with you what you can expect after you go ahead and sign that contract with your brand partner, just so that you guys feel really good about the next steps. Um, but before I do, if you're interested in content like brand deals and anything influencer marketing related, go ahead and like this video. That's how you can give back to us here on this channel to make sure we can keep creating content for you guys. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna go ahead and ask a potential brand partner is for the campaign brief. Now the campaign brief, this is a document, oftentimes like a PDF, that the brand side will put together that kind of outlines, you know, maybe the company's key messages. It may give some concepts and ideas. It gives some creative guidelines, what not to do, what to do, what works well, things of that nature. Now, of course, every single company is different and every brand is different and all campaign briefs look different, right? They're not gonna be always the same. But the idea here is that it's something that's gonna help the creator or the influencer get on the same page as the brand. Now, if you're just starting out, you can go ahead and request this. Like even just if it's asking a potential brand partner, do you guys have a campaign brief that you can send over just so that we can get on the same page creatively? They may may not have one, okay? Um, especially if they're just starting out and they're starting their own influencer marketing stuff. But now I see a lot more companies that are a lot more seasoned and is something that they do and they can't provide. Now, let's just say they don't provide a campaign brief or even if they do, but it doesn't really outline the contract, right? A campaign brief is a little bit more about, I think the creative vision and guidelines of the content. Sometimes it will state the deliverables and sometimes it won't. If it doesn't, this is what I recommend you do. Before you even create content is go into your contract and literally either print screen or cherry pick the important stuff, which is what are you responsible for? And what did you guys agree upon? When I say what you're responsible for, I mean like deliverable wise. And is there anything that like needs to be said in the content, you know, or needs to be mentioned? A lot of times the contract will outline the must haves of what your working relationship like looks like. So I always tell creators like even before creating content, go into the contract and cherry pick information. I have people put it on their notes or whatever so that you again, know what you're creating and make sure you don't miss anything. Now, whether you're working with brands right now or you're planning to in the future, if this is something that you're interested in, make sure you check out my next free live training on how to get paid brand deals. I'll be reading pitches out loud. I'll be doing some role playing. I'll be sharing my screen and so much more. So if this is a topic you're interested, head over to the link in our description to register for our next free life training. Now, before you go ahead and create that content for your brand partner, I would do a rough draft, whether it be a rough draft script or rough draft creative. And we're all about getting that approved with our brand partners before we press go. Trust me when I say you just want to make sure you guys are on the same page creatively so that you don't shoot the content and then, you know, something happens and there was a miscommunication because oftentimes I'm sure your feed does not include a reshoot. It may include revisions, but probably not a reshoot. So one thing I always say is like draft your creative out, even if it's just saying, you know, scene one will look like this, scene two will look like this, scene three will look like this doesn't have to be perfect um, and it doesn't have to be scripted, you know, and exactly what you're gonna say, but just to get them on the same page. And if sometimes it's actually even helpful to show a brand, even if it's not your own content, like, oh, it's gonna be similar to this. And you can even share someone else's content, right? Or you can create a mood board of what the shoot is going to look like, right? You can, you can get creative here. And again, the idea is to give them that before you shoot or create so that you're on the same page for approvals. Um, an extra step that you guys can even take to do this is schedule like a 30 minute call or a 15 minute call or something, again, to get on the same page, to go over it. And this way there are no surprises, they agreed to it. So when you shoot it, you're like, yeah, you guys agreed to this, like this, you know, I thought we're on the same page. It really helps clear up any like, you know, miscommunications in the future. Now, of course, the obvious next step is once you get approval for your script or what your content's gonna look like, and you're gonna shoot it and film it or whatever it is, right? Whatever type of content you're making for that. Maybe you're writing a blog post, you're gonna get to the work, you're actually gonna do your job. So obviously that is the most natural next step. Then after that, you may or may not, depending again, if you have revisions in your contract, you may have to get it 
you know, send it to them for final approval. This is the point where they'll say, yep, it's good to go. Or, hey, can you make these tweaks? The, notice how I mentioned about this like idea of revisions. You want to be very clear in your contract with your brand partners. What do these revisions look like? You don't want to be going five, six, seven revisions and not getting paid for anything additional, especially like with video and editing. So you want to be able to have like your standard. OK, we include one to two revisions and then anything after that is at this fee, this hourly fee. That is a very big bonus tip. Now, obviously, once the content's approved, it's good to go. This is where you post. This is where you post. And again, you go back to the contract. You make sure, did I have to include any hashtags? Did I tag it, you know, as paid partner if it's Instagram? Or did I include a paid promotion if it's YouTube? You know, want to make sure your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted, again, with the contract, because sometimes people will say, make sure you have certain things in the caption or make sure you know whatever that looks like you want to make sure when you're publishing your content you are good to go even if it's in your youtube description and of course you have to disclose when you are partnering with a brand it's just part of the deal so this is that part where you do so now usually the last step which I like to do, or I like to recommend all the creators in my program to do is reporting. And oftentimes it's not required, but this is where obviously the brand is probably going to ask you either for your analytics or maybe some feedback or X, Y, Z. What did your audience think like DMS, any of that, but this is where you can go above and beyond. This is where you can say, okay, I'm going to create like a really good recap, send it to the brand partner and repitch them, you know, for a potential new job. It shows professionalism um, and it also shows that you are ready to, you know, work with them again. All right, guys. So this basically wraps up a standard brand partnership. What do you guys think? Did I miss anything if you're working with brands or does this make you feel way better and relieved if you're not working with brands yet? Make sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.